Welcome to the channel, my name's Will, and today I'm reviewing the Mosa Racing R5 Direct Drive Bundle. I'll get straight to it, starting with the unboxing. Here we have some instructions and stickers. Next up is the power brick. The ES steering wheel, which is in a dustproof bag. Here is the desk clamp for the wheelbase. Power cable and USB cable cable for the pedals and there's also some fixings and tools inside this bag. The Mosa Racing R5 base which is also in a dustproof bag and finally here's the pedals. And that's everything out of the box and now we'll take a closer look at the products. We'll start off by taking a closer look at the wheel. So this wheel is a D-shaped wheel, it's 11 inches in diameter, the rim is wrapped in microfiber leather, the frame is made from aluminium back housing is plastic, we've got some aluminium paddles, the quick release is the same quick release they use in the premium wheels, the wheel also has 22 buttons and has a customizable LED shift light. The desk clamp is made from high strength steel, it can be attached to a desk as much as 6 inches thick. It has a 15 degree angle, on the top and the front there's some rubber pads to protect the base and the surface you're attaching the clamp to. Now we'll take a closer look at the base and then I'll demonstrate attaching the clamp to the base. The R5 is a direct drive wheel base which has infinite degrees of rotation, 5.5 nanometers. The housing is made from aviation grade aluminium alloy, the back of the housing is plastic. There's four inputs on the back, one for the pedals, dash, USB and power supply and there's also a power switch. The housing also acts as a heat sink so there's no need for any cooling fans. The mounting point is at the bottom of the base and as you can see there there's four thread holes. Now I'm going to attach the desk clamp to the base. Because the mounting point is at the bottom, I'm going to turn the base upside down. The fixings are included with the R5. There's a bag with an Allen key, four bolts and four washers inside. To mount the desk clamp to the base is very simple. Just make sure you've got the clamp base in the right way and line up the holes and screw in the bolts. And just to add, make sure you use a washer on each bolt. Don't go crazy when you tighten the bolts. The last thing you want to do is strip the threads. But if you think it's too loose, just get your finger in there, see if the washer is loose. If it is, then you need to tighten it a bit more. I'll demonstrate how to attach this to the desk. But first, we'll take a close look at the pedals and I'll show you how to adjust them. The SRP light pedals are made from high strength steel. They have adjustable height and spacing. There is an option to add a clutch. This can be purchased at an extra cost of £37. The pedals can also be separated from the plate if you want to invert them. I like the design of the SRP light, but I'm a little disappointed there's no load cell brake. This would have been much more realistic as a load cell measures the force applied. They have chosen to use a torsion spring and hall sensor, which I think is fine for a throttle and clutch, but the brake just doesn't do it for me. However, it is good to see they have chosen a hall sensor over a potentiometer, as potentiometers tend to wear over time. The hall sensor doesn't have this issue as it measures the travel without making contact. On the bottom, they have added some rubber grips, so you don't need to mount these to a rig, you can just place them on the floor. However, I found that these pedals were slipping when I placed them on my carpet. I did test them on a hard surface, and it was a little bit better, but the best option is to mount these to a rig. Adjusting the pedals is very simple. Take the Allen key that's supplied in the bundle, there's two bolts that hold the pedal, undo those bolts and take them out. All you need to do now is line up the pedal to how you want it, then screw in the bolts tight. Next, repeat the same step on the brake pedal. The 
Now we'll adjust the spacing. There's four bolts that hold the pedals to the plate. Undo and take those bolts out. Now just line up the pedal where you want it and screw in the bolts tight. Next repeat the same step with the throttle pedal. Mounting the desk clamp to the desk, very simple, just undo the clamp, line it up on the desk, screw it up tight. Mount the wheel to the base, point the arrows to 3 o'clock and then the wheel just snaps into place. Now we'll wire everything up and get it turned on. The cable for the pedal goes into the pedal input. Power cable goes into the DC input. And the USB cable goes to the USB input. On the side of the pedals, there's two inputs, one for the optional clutch and one for the wheelbase. Take the other end of this cable and plug it into the wheelbase input on the pedals. Now take the other end of this cable and plug it into the power brick. Don't forget to take the plastic cover off the plug and plug the USB cable into your PC. Once everything's plugged in, press the power button on the back of the base. Now everything's turned on, we'll run through the setup. Go to mozaracing.com, download and install the latest version of Moza Pit Out software. Once you've installed and opened Pit House, a window will pop up asking to activate all devices. Once you've activated the devices, restart the software and you'll be brought to this screen. Here you can change the steering angle, force feedback intensity and the pedal start and end parameters. Basic settings, you can either select a default preset or customize your own settings. Steering angle, road sensitivity, force feedback intensity, maximum speed of wheel, mechanical back to center strength and mechanical dampering. On advanced settings, you can adjust a bunch of settings. I recommend hands-off protection disabled, especially for drifting. Another cool feature in the Pit House app is the force feedback effect equalizer. Here you can adjust the RPM timings and brightness for the shift light. Here you can select the default preset for the pedal curves or you can customize your own. If you purchase the Moser Racing Dash, you can select the different dash styles here. On this page, you can update the latest firmware for your devices. 
Here you have system settings, recovery and reset, should you have any issues with your R5 and experimental function. This will take you straight to the support center. Now I'll show you how to save your own preset. Once you've made your adjustments, click save to preset racing modes. Now select the default preset, then type in a name for your custom preset. Don't worry this won't overwrite the default preset. Once you've named it, save it. Then to select your own custom preset, hover the mouse over the preset you've selected and your new preset will appear. Now I'll show you my settings for a set of Corsa. These are good for racing and drifting road cars. In Content Manager, Settings, Custom Shader Patch Settings, Force Feedback Tweaks, copy these settings. Then go to Settings, a set of Corsa, Controls, again copy these settings. Don't forget to change the rotation degree to the same value to the pit out setting. In Game Force Feedback Settings, as you can see most of this is set to zero. Because we're using a direct drive base, these artificial settings are not needed our software will activate all the force feedback effects. Again I've set to 50% which should be good for every car but some cars have stronger feedback than others so you could adjust this a little higher in some cars but make sure you monitor your force feedback for any clipping. On to some gameplay and now I'll give some final thoughts. Let's start with the ES wheel. I think the quality of the wheel is acceptable for the price, the leather feels nice, the stitching is good, the buttons are easy to reach, the paddles feel great and I like the clicking sound from them. Quick release is amazing, it's identical to what's on the premium wheels, there's a fair amount of buttons and I think there could be a hint for console compatibility since this wheel has a D-pad and buttons A, X, Y and B, maybe Xbox. Under the desk clamp, again another positive one, the clamp is strong, I don't feel any flex, it was easy to bolt the base on and my desk hasn't smashed to pieces so it's a thumbs up for the clamp. Next for the R5 base. This base is amazing for the price, there's no cooling issues, it's silent, very smooth, I can feel all the details, the force isn't mega, but it's enough, I think it's a big step up from any gear or belt driven base, so it's a big thumbs up for the R5 base. Under the pedals, I like the design of the SRP light, the adjustments are easy, I like the fact you can invert these, the pedals feel strong, the pedal travel distance I think is perfect, but I'm a little disappointed there's no load cell brake. If you've never used a load cell brake, this may not be a big deal and after a little use you will get used to it. But I'm not going to give these pedals a complete thumbs down because the rest of the design is great, so I'm kind of in the middle. Overall, amazing for the price, if you're looking for an upgrade from a gear or belt driven, 100% recommend the R5. Well, that's it for the review, hope you enjoyed it, please give a like, thanks for watching.